singing, rising to the heavens, rising to your heart, your heart. Our praises filling up the spaces in between our frailty and everything you are, you are the keeper of my heart. And I'm restless, I'm restless till I rest in you, till I rest in you. I'm restless till I rest in you, till I rest in you, oh God. Oh, speak now, for my soul is listening. Say that you have saved me. Whisper in the dark, the dark, cause I know you're more than my salvation. Without you I am hopeless. Tell me who you are, you are the keeper of my heart. And I'm restless, I'm restless, till I rest in stand. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, his mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. 
You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and, and walk, walk in, in your, your ways to, to the, the glory, glory of, of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, a very warm welcome to Calvary Church. Welcome to our worship for this Sunday morning. If you are watching this video, that means that there's probably about, I don't know, three feet of snow um, <laughs> out on the roads of Golden and uh, the surrounding communities. And I felt that it was probably too dangerous for anybody to be out and about. And so we have uh, taken the liberty, taken the precaution of uh, pre-recording a version of Sunday's worship. And, and that's what you're viewing now. Uh, some of us gathered on Friday afternoon to record this. But still, this is an offering of worship to the Lord, which we hope He finds pleasing, and we hope that you find edifying. A welcome to any of you who are new to Calvary. Uh, maybe you've found us over the last few weeks online and begun to, uh, to join us in that way. If that's the case, I'd love to uh, get to know you. Please send me an email. My email is tim at calvarygolden.net. I'd love to get acquainted with you. A little later on this morning, we have a virtual coffee hour offering. There are two groups that will meet via Zoom. One is a coffee hour where you can uh, just get to know some other folks, have some conversation. And the second option is an adult formation class uh, that's uh, going through a Bible study, um, looking at the various different aspects of Lent and sin um, and transgression, which we'll be thinking about a little later in this service. The last thing I want to mention is uh, we're not too far away now, obviously, to uh, Holy Week and Easter. Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday. 
which is just in two Sundays' time on March 28. And so I'm going to encourage you to be watching your emails because we want to get a lot of information out to you about how we will be uh, worshiping and recognizing uh, Holy Week. Um, there will be some changes to the schedule. Uh, we're planning for more services on Easter Sunday morning. We anticipate more people will want to be in person. So please do be watching your email. We'll get the information to you just as soon as we possibly can. There are a number of birthdays that I'm aware of. Today, uh, Peyton Jen Jenkins turned 16. It's also Dan McLean's birthday. Uh, on Monday, Jack Hildreth turns eight years old. On Tuesday, it's Victoria Hall's birthday. On Thursday, Roger Brown and Jerry Donaldson. And then on Friday, uh, Max Corey turns 19. Catherine Elrod turns 11. It's John Gibbs' birthday. And Nolan McGrath turns 8 also on Friday. And then on Saturday, uh, Matthew Skeen Jr. will be four years old. Let's pray for these people on the occasion of their birthdays. Watch, Watch over your, your children, children, O Lord, Lord as, as their, their days, days increase. increase. Bless, Bless and guide, guide them wherever, wherever they, they may be. be. Strengthen, Strengthen them when they stand. stand. Comfort, Comfort them when, when discouraged or sorrowful. sorrowful. Raise, Raise them up, up if, if they, they fall. fall. And, and in their hearts, hearts may your peace, peace which passes, passes understanding, understanding, abide all, all the days of their, of their lives. lives. Through, Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to all of you and anyone else who's celebrating a birthday this week. I'm aware of two wedding anniversaries. Both of them are this coming Saturday. Greg and Karen Jackson, and then also John and Michelle Weaver will be celebrating their anniversaries. Let's pray for these couples. O oh, gracious and ever-living God, you have created us, male and female, in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing, and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they have made. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our worship continues. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouths, mouths shall proclaim, proclaim your, your praise. praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, Come let us adore, adore him. him. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Israelites traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes amongst them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Please join together in reading these portions of Psalm 107. Give thanks, thanks to, the Lord, to the Lord, for he, for he is, is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. 
a reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this, not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Hear our back again. For your name is great and your heart is grace. Carrying this song over all you reign, you alone can save. Carrying this song, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy on us now. For your name is great and your heart is grace. Carry endless song over all you reign, you alone can save. Carry endless song, Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy on us now. Would you please stand? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise, praise to, to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Well, again, it's great to be together to worship the Lord this morning. In our Old Testament reading this morning, we heard of venomous snakes that God sent amongst the grumbling Israelites, nipping at their heels. It's a problem. It's a problem for many people that God should act in such a way. A common objection to Christianity stems from a misunderstanding of God's character. Something like this, God wants to control us with laws. Then he gets mad with us for breaking them, and so he wreaks vengeance upon us. It's a kind of dualism between a grumpy God and a nice God. Whereas God's true character is that he is good, and his mercy endures forever, as our psalm this morning told us. He establishes a covenant with us based upon his love for us. And like any good parent, for our sakes, he spells out the boundaries of his covenant protection and the consequences of overstepping, of straying beyond his protection. I often think of uh, God's covenant like an umbrella, something like this one. Where I come from, uh, this is sometimes your best friend. It won't do much help to us in our current weather conditions. Uh, It will probably be too much weight on the top of this umbrella. But uh, so long as you stay underneath an umbrella, then you enjoy its protection. And that's like uh, the covenant protection of God. He gives us the boundaries of his relationship with us, and it's our choice to stay under the protection of the umbrella. Or perhaps another uh, illustration might be a spotlight. I've got a flashlight that I'll have to do. It casts a beam of light down in the midst of the darkness. And God invites us, because of his love, to stay within the light. We have choice, though. We could step out from the beam of light into the darkness. What is described in the Old Testament as God's wrath and punishment is actually the natural outcome of us stepping out from under the umbrella, stepping out of the pool of light. And the biblical word for this stepping outside of God's prescribed path for us is transgression. That word is very close in Scripture to a similar word, trespass. And you might know that there are various versions of the Lord's Prayer that will render it either transgression or trespass. And I guess trespassing is another great picture alongside the umbrella and the flashlight um, of what it is to transgress. I bear on my leg, on my left leg just above my knee, uh, the mark of trespassing. I think I was around nine years old at the time and some friends and I decided to uh, break in to an orchard of a farm that was quite close to where we lived. And the orchard was marked off on its perimeter by a barbed wire fence. And we snuck through very carefully uh, the gaps in the barbed wire. We helped ourselves to to some apples. And then we heard the farmer, um, who had realized what was going on, shouting, trespassers! And so we ran, dropped the apples, and I, in my haste to get through the fence, I caught my leg on the barbed wire, and I ripped my flesh quite badly, and I bear that scar to this day. I think that's really quite a a vivid illustration, a picture of what it is to transgress, to trespass, to step beyond the bounds that God has in His mercy and His love for us so clearly marked out. And of course, in the Bible, there are plenty of examples of God's people doing this, going all the way back to Adam and Eve and the serpent in the garden, where God gives them all good things with just one warning, to not eat 
from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They have a choice, and they trespass. They transgress. And then here in Numbers 21 that we heard earlier, the people were grumbling and complaining against God, even though He was giving them every good thing and leading them towards the promised land. In their complaint, they trespassed. They transgressed against God. God has supplied all provision and all protection. And as His people choose to step away from that, are they really that surprised that the consequences of their own choices follow? In Romans chapter 1, Paul reflects on this constant flaw in the nature of humanity to walk away from the blessings of covenant relationship with God, to trespass. He uses the repeating phrase, God gave them over, to refer to the natural consequences of walking away. These are verses from Romans chapter 1. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts. God gave them over to shameful lusts. He gave them over to a depraved mind and to do what ought not to be done. In our reading from Ephesians chapter 2, Paul has similar thoughts in mind, and he describes this existence of being out from under the covenant as being dead in our transgressions and sins, reaping the wrath for our own actions. And this leads Paul to perhaps the clearest expression of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he ever wrote. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And this brings us uh, to a word for sin that we might not have even contemplated. You see that word transgression is also another word for sin. And last week, uh, Kathy preached so well on the subject of sin. I found it very helpful uh, when she gave us this way to understand what it is to sin. She said that we are called, as followers of Christ, to love God and to love others. That's basically the summary of what it is to be a follower of Christ. And so therefore, whenever we fail to love God or fail to love others, we're sinning. We're in that position of transgression. Transgression in the Bible is often used to describe our sin against other people. We can sin against God, and we can sin against other people. And it occurs whenever we betray someone, or we violate the trust of another. Sticking with Kathy's thoughts uh, from last week a moment longer, I, I was perhaps understandably reminded of the parable of the Good Samaritan. A lawyer comes to Jesus and asks what he must do to inherit eternal life. Jesus turns it around and asks him, well, what do you think? And the lawyer uh, quotes from Scripture that he should love the Lord, his God, and love his neighbor. Then the lawyer asks a follow-up question, who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells the well-loved parable of the Good Samaritan, where a man is traveling from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, and there he's set upon by a gang of thieves and robbers who beat him up, rob him of his possessions, and leave him for dead. As the man is lying there in his pitiable state, a priest is coming along the road, journeying to Jerusalem. But when he sees the man, he quickly crosses over to the other side and pretends that he doesn't see. A little later, a Levite again is traveling to Jerusalem, and his reaction is the same. He pretends not to see. He does not love his neighbor. Far from it. But then along comes a stranger. In fact, a feared enemy, a Samaritan. But when he sees the man, he stops. And he attends to his wounds. 
He gives him water to drink. He puts him on his own donkey and covers him with his cloak and takes him to a place of shelter, uh, an inn, where he leaves him in the care of the innkeeper and promises to pay whatever is due. It's a wonderful parable about how to love our neighbor. It's a great expression of that. And we typically focus on the actions of the Samaritan as being a good example of being a good neighbor. How to fulfill that second part of our calling, to love others. But we also in this story have the example of the priest and the Levite. They have exactly the same opportunity as the Samaritan to love their neighbor. But instead, by their inaction, they transgress against the man. But you know what really caught my attention in this? Is that we really cannot separate the two parts of our calling. To love God and to love our neighbor. Elsewhere in the Gospels, when Jesus is asked, which is the greatest commandment? He responds not with one commandment, but with two. And it's these same two commandments, to love the Lord our God and to love our neighbor. This is where the book of James is so helpful. We often think of James's writings as wrestling with uh, the contrast between grace and works. And that's a good way to read James. But we could also read it uh, as describing the inseparable nature of the end in our call to love God and to love our neighbor. If you are refusing to love your neighbor, you are refusing to love God. Transgressions against others are transgressions against God. Sins committed against others are just another way to step out from under the umbrella of God's covenant relationship with us, leaving us exposed to the consequences. Death. Now, (laughs) clearly all of that is the bad news. But in our readings today, we are given such a powerful expression of the good news of our redemption from sin and transgressions and death. Certainly in Paul's writings in Ephesians 2, but also in this most cherished passage from John chapter 3. The cross of Christ is often misrepresented along those same dualistic lines that we were previously thinking about. A wrathful, grumpy, vindictive father God takes out his vengeance on his nice, kind, helpless son. Nothing could be farther from the truth. No, God watches us continue to step out from under the umbrella, to step into the dark, choosing separation from Him, and His heart breaks over our stubborn, bad choices. And so God Himself, in the person of Jesus, the light of the world, takes our place, steps into the darkness, receives the venomous bite of the serpent, suffers our death Himself, so that we might live. And through all of that, he establishes a new covenant. Once we were dead in our transgressions, now we are alive in Christ. This is the divine rescue plan that we will relive just two weeks from now, through the days of Holy Week and Easter. It's the glorious hope that will dawn on resurrection morning, that dawns every day of our lives in Christ. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Let us look to the cross of Christ and live. Amen. Let us pledge our allegiance to King Jesus in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe believe in one God, God, the the Father, Father, the the Almighty. Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us humbly bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions in the confidence that he intercedes for us. Almighty God, who called all creation into being, we are grateful for the gift of moisture that our parched land so desperately needs. And we praise you for the seasons that mark the passing of our days. The beauty of the snow brings with it hazard for those traveling and great threat towards the homeless. By your mighty hand, protect those exposed to the elements and prevent accidents, injury, and loss of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift before you all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. For loved ones and those we know not, whose bodies are failing, bring your healing. We praise you for the ongoing successful rollout of COVID vaccines, even while we continue to pray for those battling the virus. Strengthen the hands and hearts of health workers who have already given so much of themselves during the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Ruler of the nations, we pray for your justice to reign in our land and around the globe. Bless our elected leaders at all levels of government with wisdom, strength, of character and compassion for the people they represent, that they may govern well and for the good of all. We pray for peace in Myanmar, Mozambique, Syria, and all the war-torn nations of the world. Open our hearts to refugees and those displaced by violence and terror. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Peace be peace with be you. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us to the heavenly banquet. Accept our lives as an offering this day in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Measure 
The Lord be with you, and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts, we lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give Him, him thanks, thanks and, praise. and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By His grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for Him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection. resurrection, we, we await, await his, his coming, coming in, in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this this day day our daily daily bread, bread. and forgive forgive us our our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. You may eat. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. You may drink. Let us pray. Almighty Almighty and and ever-living God, God, we we thank thank you for for feeding us with the spiritual food food of the the most most precious precious body and blood blood of your Son, Son, our our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ, and for for assuring us us in these holy mysteries mysteries, that that we are are living members members of the body of your Son son, and and heirs of of your your eternal kingdom. kingdom. And now, now, Father, Father send, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to, do, to love, love and serve, and serve you, you as faithful, faithful witnesses, witnesses of Christ, of Christ our, Lord. our Lord. To him, to, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit be honor, honor and, glory, and glory, now and, now forever. and forever. Amen. Amen. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Be with you always. Amen. Amen. One, two, three, four. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome. 
some wonder Consider all the works thy hand hath made I see the star I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe displayed Then sings my soul, my Savior God to be Sings my soul, my Savior God to be. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the tree. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. the land. 